Okay, now it's time to add a handle. And I am going to just shamelessly use my machine shop. Can't help it. I took a piece of this threaded rod, which, sorry all you metric guys, but that's a SAE thread. It's 5 16 coarse thread. Use whatever the right thing is. And I, I turned this down to a common drill diameter that I'm going to use to perforate the plane body. So I'm going to hold the plane in the milling machine like this, drill a hole here, and then end up with some kind of seat on this end. So when we're all done, I want the, this pin to go in here parallel to the blade, and then we can solder it to the body of the plane back here, and also to the floor of the plane and back of the bedding surface of the blade. All right. So I'm going to just eyeball the squareness of this surface that the blade is going to rest on. I'm going to have to get this very tight to have anything like confidence that it's going to hold still while I'm machining it. I feel like I've crushed it a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I'm afraid that's what we're going to need. Now, I'm going to use this special drilling tool, which is going to work really well for us. Again, apologies to you metric folks. This is um, a, a one quarter of an inch and uh, 6.33 millimeters. But for us, this is a standard size. And, oh, first I'll, I'll find the center of the part. So that's one side. And the other side, this is called an edge finder, so it's a clever little device that I've explained before, but anyway, when it touches the edge, it slides along, it runs along the edge like that and it lets you know where it is. So we're gonna ask the readout to divide by two and uh, show us the center of the part by magic. All right, so I'm gonna use a long bit just to eyeball this. We won't be using this to make the part, but we're going to um, have to figure out where to put this hole uh, left to right. And I want to get it as close as I can comfortably get it to the blade, you know, without 
interfering with anything. So I'm just eyeballing the distance between um, this rod and the blade. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm going to check it one more way first. Yeah, that should be okay. Okay, so I'm just just making sure that I'm not going to run into anything with a handle. All right, so I'm going to use this short drill. This is a special tool that's designed to be very rigid. Here's a long version of it. Uh, very rigid. It's, it's called a combination drill and countersink, or uh, when I was a kid, they, we called it a center drill because you can use, use it to drill a 60 degree taper hole that you could use a lathe center in. Although they're also available in 82 and a half degree and 90 degree configurations. So I've set this in the middle of the part and figure out, I figured out where I want the hole this way. And the job of this drill is not to deflect, which of course there it is deflecting. <laughs> Let me make sure I have a sharp drill here. Didn't really look at it. Oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> this one, this end is sharp. Okay. That was the whole point of this drill is that it does not deflect when it hits this angled surface. So it did deflect a little bit at the beginning, but now that it's drilling a little bit more, I can tell that it's, it's moved over. I can hear it. I can hear it still on the other surface, the left side surface. But I think for our purposes, it's going to work fine. And this isn't something I would normally do, but I'm going to drill all the way through with this drill. I think I am. Well, I don't know. Now I'm going to, I'm going to do it another way. Not super happy with how that's working. Not bad, but let's try and I'm going to just drop an end mill in there. See how that works. Well, it's a four flute end mill, and um, but it supposedly is center cutting, but it's brass, which we can get away with a lot in brass. It's so easy to cut.
Well, it looks like our center drill did a pretty good job after all. But anyway, this is this is working fine. Taking light cuts. There we go. Now we have a couple of choices. One thing we could do is to put a longer tool in there and go down and try and cut the bottom of this. We well, do have some material there. Huh. Well, hold on a minute. I'm going to get a measuring tool. So, I'm not certain, but we might be able to get this tool to go in there and, and measure. This is for measuring pipes. I know it looks like a fancy, fancy thing, but um, it's, they're very inexpensive because people use them to measure gun cartridges for reloading. So let's see, this should be direct reading of our thickness here, which is, well, that's 100, 200. Now, it's only about three millimeters thick or about an eighth of an inch. I'm not gonna bother with it. <laughs> I'll fit the end of this rod to the right angle and we'll solder, we'll solder this rod, we'll solder this rod to the bottom of the plane bed. By cutting an angle on it. All right. I hope I didn't crush it too much <laughs> in the vise. But anyway, this is going to go in there now. I'm just going to grind an angle on the, on the end of this and we'll solder it in. So next, I guess off camera, I'll sandblast the plane surface, this bottom surface in here, make sure I get a good clean surface, and then we'll, uh, we'll solder this in. Okay, so here's our piece of threaded rod with our beveled end. And 
using a couple pieces of uh, scrap stock here to hold it in position. I'm going to have to get this pretty hot. Well, this should be pretty easy to solder, I guess. I hope. Let's see if I can. All right. Looks good. I hope. There it is. Well, it looks fine. Um, nice and wet everywhere we need it to be. Looking good. And uh, solid as a rock. extra solder in there as usual where we don't want it you see those two little dots in there on the blade landing surface managed to get most of it out with this custom made dog leg chisel and uh, get in there with a little file Oh, that's interesting. Looks like the the surface that the blade lands on isn't very good. So we're going to have to file that. Ideally, it should be a tiny bit hollow left to right flat or maybe a tiny bit hollow 
so that the blade is nailed down tight when the clamp is applied. So you can have a look in here and see this odd surface. So it's got a hollow here. It's cutting over here, that's fine. Because there's a it's a bevel down play, it's really gonna be landing back here on the back surface of this this flat here. So when I'm in there filing, I'm intentionally bending this file to a curve. to try and help it cut the right shape. The last thing we would want would be for this surface to be convex. That would be bad. But if it's flat or a tiny bit concave, that's, that's good and that'll support the edge. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It's getting, getting to look pretty good now. That's pretty good. And again, we can see that there's lots of good solder in here. Big fillet bonding this, and we've got we've got solder up here at this angled intersection. So it's solid as a rock. So that's good. While we're here, I'm noticing that this surface right in back of the throat opening with this edge right here is very sharp and so I'm going to deliberately dull that surface with this little file I've got before I forget and this this surface doesn't really mean anything but there's no reason for it to be sharp just file a little land on this That'll be good. Little bevel. Okay. All right, we'll put it together and see what happens. Here's our, um, our knob, and this is threaded all the way in like this, probably 25 millimeters or an inch or so. So that'll allow us to to adjust the length of of the handle. All we need is to put a nut on here and we can uh, tighten that against this ball and put it anywhere we want. If it isn't all the way in there, and that actually feels about right to me. We'll see how it works. So, have yet to sharpen the blade, but... Oh look, good! The blade isn't fouling anything. <laughs> it's even clearing the handle when it's screwed in all the way. How did that happen? And uh, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> mention the Ibex plane has some really good design here where you can see it has this little curvy bearing surface here. And I always wondered what that was for. Um, but now I know, because it means that you can get this part in and out without removing the blade. But on this um, plane from a land far, far away, that's not gonna happen because of the geometry. So we have to be able to put this in first. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like a I've got a little interference here. So I have to file some of these threads off in order to let the pin get in there. So that's a little complication, but that's no big deal. We're going to make short work of that. Shouldn't be a very big cut that's required.
We'll see if that lets us in. <laughs> Remember I told you when we were in the milling machine that I felt like I was squeezing the, squeezing the, uh, the plane body and sure enough I distorted it a little bit. So we might have to file this. <laughs> I have to file this cap a little bit to uh, to get it in. Well, it fits in that way, but oh, I see what happened. Well, let me try bending it. I'll be right back. of metal working here. No, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to file this a little bit to get this in. Oh, it's so close. All right. Okay, that let us in. So the way this plane was made, the blade has to feed in <laughs> after the cap goes in. A little odd, but it's just how it is. Anyway, there it is. So got this nice cushy rubber ball handle. It's going to keep you from getting beat up by these sharp metal parts. And it's going to allow us to get our fingers on both sides of the plane and gives us good control. Off camera I'm going to tune up the blade and um, set it up and we'll get back here and show you how it works. All right. Okay. Well, here's where the rubber meets the road. So I put a, a nut and a lock washer on there and screwed this on. So um, as you, you can see, everything has good clearance. The, the blade is just not fouling this. That's good. And it all's feeling pretty good. Can't get these back corners of the blade are a little sharp, but we'll never know because we've got this this rubber ball to protect us. And this I got I think on uh, Amazon for some job I can't remember now. But there, there's a brass insert inside and nice um, squeezy. It seems like maybe 70 or 75 durometer rubber little give to it. Nice and grippy, a little texture. And uh, backed off the blade and sharpened it and just guessed at the curve, set it for some cut. It's not, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm setting the back of the blade. I don't know if we can get a camera angle on this. You can see that the blade is sticking out a tiny bit more on one side than the other. But for purposes of our demonstration, we're going to be good here. So let's just see. Oh, look, there's a cut. <laughs> That's good. So well, 
Well, that's pretty good. I like that sound. Of course, this is Tilia, one of my favorite materials, also known as basswood. You can see that this little monster is taking some wood off. <laughs> Of course, as we know, cutting across the grain is, is a good technique for hogging, but in basswood it's so forgiving that really just awesome material. Anyhow, if we can get a low angle light here, we can see that we have a pretty nice surface. I mean, for, for a cutter that we just tried it, you know, this was just a guess. And uh, throat opening is, you know, it's not perfectly tuned or anything like that, but it's not awful, not awfully big. Gosh, it's just working great. So very happy with this, it's got an awesome feel to it. And I would, uh, I would put this up against any commercially available plane and say that it, uh, it kicks butt. And our investment here was a little fooling around, most of which you saw in real time. This piece was an eBay thing for, I don't know, $29, I think. And I just looked at them today. There's, there's some that are even less money. Although usually you have to buy a set of them. Um, I don't think the little ones are really worth having. But you can see how nicely this thing is working and taking off a lot of material. Looking good. So our new little buddy. <laughs> Thanks for watching.